yourself. Began this new series. I'm excited about it. It will be a teaching series. I pray that I won't do much hollering. Just a whole bunch of teaching and giving the word of God over and over again. This month in the Y series, I will ask and answer questions to empower and enlighten you because it's time for you to grow into your full potential. Say this with me. I want to grow. I want to grow. Into, into my full, my full potential. potential. I'm sick and tired, sick and tired of, living of living beneath, beneath who God, who God created, created me to be. Yeah. Now give God a shout of praise Hallelujah. for your best days are yet ahead. While you're standing, turn with me to the book of Hosea chapter 4 verse number 6 Hosea chapter 4 verse number 6 and remain standing throughout the duration of the reading of God's word and right after Hosea we'll jump down to Proverbs then you can be seated we're going to turn this into a classroom this morning we're going to give you what you need to win no more faking till you make it you'll be equipped to make it Hosea says in the book of Hosea chapter 4 verse number 6 my people not the outsiders but God's people the church believers the saints the called out the ecclesia my people are destroyed defeated, denied, cut off, eliminated, wiped out, frustrated, humiliated, unproductive for a lack of knowledge. We know how to shout. We know how to feel good. We know how to turn it all the way up. But we're being destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. We're being cut off from our full potential because of a lack of knowledge. Then Solomon the wise man says in Proverbs 19 and 8, Proverbs 19 and 8, turn it with me while you're still standing. Proverbs 19 and 8, the wise man Solomon says, the one who gets wisdom, hmm, it's time to get something. The one who gets wisdom loves life. Now, now you don't have to be real smart. You don't have to be a rocket science to know the adverse. The one who gets wisdom loves life, so the one who entertains foolishness must hate life. Uh, oh. So while, you, while, you, while, you, while you're turning it all the way up, are you saying, I really don't like life? If the only thing that gratifies you and stimulates you is foolishness, maybe you're saying, when I look in the mirror, I really don't love the man or the woman in the mirror because the word of God, my final authority says, the one who gets wisdom loves life. Yes, sir. And then he pauses, the one who cherishes understanding will soon prosper. See, you're praying for prosperity, but are your actions lining up to prosperity? Are the seeds you're sowing seeds of prosperity or all your seeds of foolishness? Take, take your seats and let's go to work. The Y series. This morning I will attempt in time I have left. There won't be no conclusion. I'll just stop and we'll pick back up next Sunday until the end of July. We'll just keep working and working working but today I will attempt to answer a few questions why I need God Jesus and the Holy Spirit why I need the church and why I need pastor I received this question I don't see why I need God in my life real question I don't see why I need God in my life it's up to me to get ahead in life and if I work real hard, I believe I can achieve success. If, if, I, if I work real hard, I can achieve success. I really don't need God and this church stuff. That, that's, that's, 
outdated. That was for mama and when they didn't know any better. I, I could go to the final schools. I could, I could work on the best jobs. I could, I could go out and grind and hustle. I, I, could, I could be a self-made man. I'm the captain of my ship. Well, they don't have time for that gut stuff, that church stuff. And I sure don't need a pastor. Maybe that's, that's you. Maybe, 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 maybe that's how you, how you feel. But the Bible, the Bible warns us not to lean on our own understanding. And truth be told, if, if we're leaning on our own understanding, then we're limiting ourselves from our full potential because sometimes, come on, be real with yourself, sometimes you have to admit your understanding is uneven. See, sometimes you're seeing one thing but understanding something totally different. Have you ever been in a situation where, where, where your understanding, you have to look in the mirror and say, I was real off course on that. Your, your understanding was way off track, way off course. Have you ever had a bad understanding about something? Well, if you lean on your own understanding, it's like playing Russian roulette. Sometimes your feelings will get it right and sometimes your feelings will fail you. So the Bible warns us not to lean on our own understanding because sometimes your understanding will get you off track. And then the Bible, the Bible gives us a very clear warning that pride is the beginning of self-destruction. And many of us are self-destructing because we think too highly of ourselves. We think that we are so intelligent that, that our intellect can get us satisfaction. But I know a whole bunch of smart folks who are losing their mind. I know a whole bunch of folks who know a whole bunch of stuff. But because they don't know God, they panic under pressure. I know some folks with PhDs who cry to me at night because they don't understand how to make it through life. I know a whole bunch of smart folks need volumes and weed and alcohol to make it through the day because with their smart sense, they don't have a real grip on this thing called life. Jesus. Watch this. We are created in the image of God. And you can argue all you want to about how we got here. We came from apes and all that foolishness. Big Bang Theory. But watch this. If the world was organized through a Big Bang Theory, if, if you've heard the fireworks over the weekend, when a firework goes off, the matter goes everywhere. It's, it's no sense of organization, but the world is very organized. The sun know when to come out, and the moon know when to shine. Yeah. The water know how far to go and how far to stop. So yeah. if, if that was a Big Bang Theory, that would be confusion and chaos, but I can set my clock on the fact that at a certain time in the day, yeah. it's going to get a big bang couldn't have done that. Only God can create an organized universe full of order and consistency. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If I'm created in the image of God, get this young people. If I'm created in the image of God, but the only way I can reach my full potential is that I spend time with God. If I'm created in God's image, I need to know what God looks like, sounds like, and act like. Anything less than God at my very best, I'm second best. With my smart, cute self, I can't get any higher than where I am right now without God. Because I'm created in God's image, so I need God to remind me of who I am. If not, I'll get tricked. If not, I'll chase stuff that takes me off my pathway of production. If I don't know what God looks like and who God is, I'll fall to a false image and I'll start looking like and acting like the world. So instead of spending time with God, I'll spend time with Jay-Z and Beyonce. And don't get it twisted. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Jay-Z or Beyonce. What I'm saying is when they become your idol and your God, when you'll stand in line, drop 500 to sit on the 19 row, when you'll come to church and say, preacher, hurry 
me up and get through. What you're doing is you're creating their full potential and you're falling short. Many nations were built off the back of slave labor. And if I told you point blank that this world has created a new slave system and the new slave is not on the plantation but at your job and in your neighborhood and in your mind, you get offended. But the reality of it is you become a slave to the system because you're so hooked on impressing folks who don't like you in the first place. When I don't know God, I'm trying to find out who am I, what should I be, and who should I be. So I will let people mold me and shape me. And I promise you, who's ever molding you and shaping you will always create a you a little lower than them. Yes. They only pray to a certain point. They only encourage you to a certain point. Point. As long as I'm the Alpha Omega. But I'm not going to pray you to a breakthrough that's going to put you over me. Come on, Lord. Watch, watch this, watch this. Go with me to the book of Psalms. Chapter 124. Uh, you go get this. I'm declaring in the month of July in which we celebrate freedom, you will be free. You'll be free to reach the next level of life. And you would not have any excuses about why I can't win. So if you fail, it would not be because the game plan failed you. Because if you run the play the way the play is designed, I promise you, you and your family and your next generation will get to the end zone of life. So get ready to get your touchdown dance together. Psalms 124, watch, watch this, David blesses me. Psalms 124, why I need God? If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, Ah, let's play along. If the law had not been our side, let Greenhouse say. If the law had not been our side, let Greenhouse say. Verse 2, if the law had not been on our side, when people attack us, they would have swallowed us alive. When their anger flared against us, the flood would have engulfed us. The torment would have swept over us. The raging wars would have swept us away. Praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fall of snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Why I need God? Because when people attack me, if I don't have some God on my side, if it were not for the Lord on my side, every time my haters show up, I would get in trouble if the Lord was not on my side. Have you ever been lied on, talked about, and mistreated? Have you ever wanted to get somebody back? Have you ever wanted to attack somebody? But because the Lord is on my side, when folks attack me, I can stand still. Instead of raising my hand again, get them back. I can raise my hand and praise the Lord. I can bring my hands in and pray. God, give me strength right now. I'm about to go off, off in here, off in here. Every now and then, when my mind start playing ghetto boy tricks on me, if the Lord had not been on my side, I know you got together. I know you think all the right thoughts. I know you do everything right, but for somebody like me, daily, I'm declaring for the minute, if the Lord had not been on my side, when they attacked me, I would have attacked back. When they came against me, I would have fought back. But anybody here today glad the Lord was on your side? He shut your mouth up. He held your hands still. And instead of running toward them, you just thought, Your 
face. Yes, 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 yes. At the same time, stabbing you in your back. Yeah. But because the Lord is on my side. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, the Lord is on my side. And it doesn't not say if you get attacked. In the language, it does not say if you get attacked. It says when you get attacked. So one thing in life is certain. There will be haters that will show up. There will be folks that will dog you out. There will be folks that will test your spirituality. There will be folks that will be your litmus test. You really want to find out if you really love the Lord? You really want to find out if you're really saved? You really want to find out if you're washed in the blood? Well, there will be some people, the devil will assign on your job, in your family, on your block, in your house, in your church in your area of misery that will test you. They will be your litmus test to find out exactly where you are. But I give God praise because the Lord is on my side. You can't make me cuss back. The Lord is on my side. I'll let him cuss you. I don't know about you, I don't know about you, but, but, but by nature, by nature, in the flesh I'm very aggressive. I got this Napoleon syndrome, little man syndrome. If you, if you talk too loud to me, I'm ready to fight in the natural. But if the Lord is on my side, I've learned that I can't fight all these battles. I know, I know you, you, you hold, you, you got together, but pray for pastor. I need the Lord on my side. And then David says, David says, here, he describes some storms and some situations. He said, so, in other words, David says, when life got rough. I'm glad the Lord was on my side, Paul, when life got rough. When, when, when things start getting more than I can control, when, when, when things start getting chaotic, I'm glad the Lord was on my side. When, when sickness came, I'm glad the Lord was on my side. When, when the water started to rage against me, I'm glad the Lord was on my side. When everything that could go wrong started going wrong, I'm glad the Lord was on my side. When the bullet went off, I'm glad the Lord was on my side. In the testing room, I'm glad the Lord was on my side. When life started falling apart all around me, when life get chaotic, when my life feels like a big boom and everything just going off, I'm glad the Lord is on my side. When I feel like hell is breaking out on my job, in my house, and in my body, I'm glad the Lord is on my side. Has life ever gotten rough for you? I know we're not, we're not having testimony period, but, but, but let the redeemed the Lord say so. Has life ever gotten real rough on you? Have things ever gotten chaotic? Have you ever felt like you couldn't take another thing? Have you ever felt like the water was right here and another drop you're going to drown? Have you ever felt like packing your bag and getting the heck out of town? Have you ever felt like walking away from everything you knew and everybody you knew and starting all over again? I can't take this, Pastor. Have you ever been there? Has life ever got hard? Well, I'm glad the Lord was on my side. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, God. Jesus, the Lord is on my side. I'm not talking to the world right now. I'm talking to the church. I'm talking to the choir. I'm talking to the band. I'm talking to the saints, the, the preachers, and the deacons, and the pastor. I'm, I'm talking to the deacon Nancy. I'm talking to, to the Lord's Supper ministry. I'm talking to the intercessors. I'm talking to those who pray all the time. I'm talking to those who know they know the Lord, but yet still life gets rough every now and then. Job knew who the Lord was. Naked I came in this world and naked I leave, yet I'll praise the Lord. Why are you praising God, Job? Your children died. You lost your income. Your business went under. Why are you praising the Lord? Because I know the Lord gave it to me one time. He'll give it to me again. I praise the Lord when all hell breaks out. Because Jesus went to hell and defeated hell and came back. So I know I got a bounce back in me. I got a bounce back. If the Lord had not been on my side, I believe I'm talking to the church. I expect the stuff to go wrong when I was out in the world. 
In the hood, we had this saying, charge it to the game. Yeah. <sighs> but I thought the church, it would be different. But I discovered in the church, that's more game than the world. I had to overextend my credit in the church. I've been charging so much off. If you will, I'm just teaching the Bible. Turn with if you will, John 10 and 10. I don't, I don't want to get too excited. John, but sometimes when, when I'm preaching, I gotta be honest. Even though I thank God for all of you, you're yeah, all of you. I thank God, but I'm sometimes preaching to myself. Ooh, if the Lord would not have been on my John 10, 10. The thief. Listen, listen, listen. The game ain't changed. The thief. Call him what he Comes only. He has no agenda. No other purpose. No other assignment. No other mission. No other vision. Times may change. But he stays the same. The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's all he comes to. But watch this, watch this. I'm glad the Bible did not put a period there. But pause. Take a deep pause. The punctuation calls for a deep pause. Because Jesus now says, but I. That's why I meet Jesus. But I have come that day, they who are going through some rough times, they who are under attack. But I have come that they may have life and life to the full. Oh, good God Almighty. Jesus says, I came to save them from themselves with grace and mercy and to give them life and not just any life, but life to the full. If I took a survey this morning, some of you are not experiencing life to the full. You're doing what I call surviving. You have a mundane life where you wake up in the morning, you go through your routine, go to bed at night, wake up the next morning, and go through it all over again. You're not living life to the full. God has so much more for you to grab hold to, but you have allowed the enemy, the thief, the conniver, the deceiver, you let them make you think that God is no longer in control. You watch the economy and you throw your hands up. You watch folks in the church at the Food and you throw your hands up. You make folks or let folks make you give up. But I'm glad this morning the thief no longer has me under control. I believe Jesus when he said I came that EA may have life and have life to the full. So if your life is messed up right now, make this declaration. I'm taking back my life. Yes, no. To the full. Taking back my life. To the full. To Jesus. Puts us back on track to reach our full potential. Sometimes you get off course. Sometimes your mind. So the man think it. Sometimes your mind gets off track. But Jesus said, I come to get you back on track. To reach your full potential. Anybody here glad about it? No, no takers. John 15 and 5. John 15 and 5. Oh, John 15 and 5. Jesus
Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. He's describing a spiritual connection. Oh, you're trying to get the wrong hookup. I, I, I know you, you you thought that if you get a you get a six fold. Yeah, yeah. Uh, give, me, give me a six fold Negro. Yeah. Uh, everything will be alright. Six fold with six figures. Yeah. It'll be alright. Yeah. With a six pack. Yeah. Yeah. Not realizing six, six, six was satanic. a woman that's a boss in the bedroom and the boardroom. Let me give me a boss lady to, to hook up. Not realizing Christ the real hookup comes when I connect with the vine. Uh, what vine are you doing it for? Uh, Jesus says I am the vine. You are the branches. Watch this, watch this, watch this. If you remain in me and I in you, you will. It's a promise. It's a promise straight from heaven. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Yeah, that's how you get your full potential by being connected with Jesus. But then he warns us, apart from me, you can do nothing. How many seasons of your life when you spend being unproductive with some earthly hookups, not realizing the hookup is conditional? When are you going to realize if that's your source of blessings, it will soon become a messy? Because at some point in time, you can't repay your debt. Servant. It's just a pretty term for slaves. See, after you become so indebted to me, you now become an indentured servant. So now you have to work for me without any income in return because you're in my debt. You're an indebted servant. And that's what sin does. It lets you play around for a long time until you become indebted to sin. Now you become an indentured servant to sin. And you can't win with sin. To achieve maximum results, I need Jesus. Uh, so some things I hate, we, 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 we took out the church. I used to love the fact the church used to say, I need Jesus. Every song had Jesus in it. Every prayer had Jesus in it. I remember when the, when the mourners bitch, when, when, the, when the old women would get on their knees and just holler at Jesus. I remember when the deacons would, would start their prayer with Jesus. In their prayer with Jesus. I remember every time the choir would sing a song, it would be some about Jesus. Oh, how sweet the name Jesus. Anybody here realize I need Jesus? Don't get so smart. Don't get so cute. Don't get so fancy. Don't get so swagged out. Don't get so new school. You forget about Jesus. I need Jesus. Yes, Lord. I need Jesus. Watch this. So I need God. Yeah. I need Jesus. Yeah. And then John 14, 26. I pray I'm not going too fast. John 14, 26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything. I have said to you. Yes, let me work this. Let me work this. Let me work this. Come on, I got you. So I need God because I'm creating His image. I need Jesus to get me back on track because sometimes I get off track. No, I need the Holy Spirit to be my advocate. I need somebody to fight for me. See, sometimes when life gets real rough. You get weak. Yes, yes, yes. You feel like throwing in the towel. Yes, you don't even have the strength to pray another prayer. Oh, yes. you, don't, you, don't, you start saying, I'm too tired to go to church. Yes, yes. What good is it going to 
going to do? And when I go to church, I got to come right back to this address, to this situation, to this dilemma, to this drama. So I, I just want to give up. I'm watching the clock tick, praying that soon my time will run out. Man told you, he said, I'm too much of a coward to take my life, but sometimes I wish I was dead. Oh. How many of you don't, don't raise your hand? Because I know you really can't because of, of church folks. But how many of you have felt like throwing in the towel? How many of you are praying, God, just take it away? If taking it away means taking me out, God, just do, do, do. But then the Holy Spirit becomes my advocate, my fighter, my protector, my energizer. He becomes the one who encourages me when everybody else has turned their back on me. When my mother and father forsook me, the Holy Spirit shows up and he ain't keep on doing it. When everybody tells me what I can't do, the Holy Spirit said I can do all things through Christ which screams me. When everybody turned their back on me, the Holy Spirit says, now nah, I got your back. When I don't know how I'm going to make it, the Holy Spirit is like a prize fight, a corner man. Your fight is bleeding, been busted up, head bleeding, body hurting, ready to fall to the canvas. And the next blow, he drops down. The referee is counting one, two, but over in the corner, the Holy Spirit is the corner man. And the Holy Spirit says, get back up, get back up, get back up. Have you ever been down? And the Holy Spirit said, get back up. Have you ever been counting you out? And the Holy Spirit said, get back up. Have you ever had a doctor's report? And the Holy Spirit said, keep on living. You shall not die. Have you ever been so depressed? You thought you were going to lose your mind. And the Holy Spirit says, he's a mind regulator. Have you ever been now? Have you ever been lost? And the Holy Spirit showed up with a spiritual navigation system. 